Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new here. Today I'm going to be doing an eye offer haul. Now, if you've never heard of eye offer before, I'll quickly explain what they are. They are kind of similar to eBay. There are individual sellers on the website that sell lots of different items, pretty much anything you can think of. However, this website is a little different considering the majority of the items sold on there are replicas of other high-end brands and luxury items. There are some items that aren't replicas, but I feel like for the most part, majority of what people buy on there and majority of the items listed are definitely replica items especially the handbags and I feel like replica handbags are one of the biggest portions of items on that website now I had heard of I offer probably at the start of last year and I didn't pay too much attention to it I just saw some reviews on YouTube for example people talking about the bags that they got or their experiences getting scammed but one video that really piqued my interest was when Patricia Bright shared a video showing bags that she'd bought on I offer and comparing them with her real designer bags and I know a few people have done something similar since then or maybe even beforehand but that's just the first one I saw now after watching that video I thought some of them aren't half bad and I say that as someone who doesn't know anything nor have I been interested in getting a designer handbag and I'm not that big on bags to begin with or I haven't been for most of my life however last year I thought maybe I could treat myself to getting one nice handbag but I just didn't know where to begin of course I don't know that much about handbags or designer bags so I thought if I got one, of course it'd be a lot of money to spend and I'd want to make sure it's something I could get good use out of and that would blend in with my wardrobe because I feel like it's a bit different to shoes. I do have designer shoes for example but no designer bags. I think shoes are a little bit different because they're a little bit easier to mix and match. You can have one nice staple set and it can be well worth it. However, for a bag, in my opinion, it's got to be practical, it's got to suit your lifestyle and of course it's got to go with your outfits. And there are definitely some bags that do that better than others, unless you want to go for a statement bag. So those were questions all spinning around in my head when I wondered if I wanted a real designer bag. And then I remembered back to the eye offer bags, I thought maybe I could just buy a couple cheap eye offer bags, try them out, see if they suit my lifestyle and my wardrobe. And then out of any of the ones I buy, if there's one I really love, I'd be happy buying the real thing since I know it will get on well with my lifestyle and my outfits. So that's what I've done. I've bought a few bags over the past couple months and what I'll do today is show you the ones that I've purchased, share my opinion on the website and give you some tips and tricks if you want to buy on there as well to hopefully prevent you getting scammed. Now I think those are all the little things I needed to say at the start, so now what I'll do is just jump right into the haul. I think the best way I can explain everything is just by going through from what I ordered first up until most recently. I'll also make sure I share all of the details on the real designer bag and the price versus the eye offer replica. Alright now starting with the first bag I got on eye offer. This one I have here is just a little pink YSL bag. You can get a sense of how big it is there, and it's just on a long chain. This one I think is based on the YSL Monogram chain wallet, and that one's price is $2,085. Now very quickly, of course, I'll be talking all in Australian dollars today, so if you use another currency, you should still be able to get a sense on the pricing, just when I compare it to what I paid on iOffer, or the difference. But now as for what this really is, on iOffer, I got the YSL clutch chain shoulder bag, and I paid $32.50 for this one. So this one, I think it really set the bar quite high for the bags from iOffer that I purchased. Since it was the first one, I'm just so happy with it. It looks exactly like it did in the picture, and it just feels like it's good quality. It does feel quite sturdy. It's got this little snap closure, and I haven't had any issues with that. Um, there's a bit of stuff in there at the moment. I've got a receipt. It does have a little zipper compartment and another small pocket for a phone. So there's a little bit of room in there to put certain things. But overall, I do love the size of it. I think the color is just perfect for me. The gold hardware is not my top preference, but I don't think there was an option to get a silver. And overall, I just like the functionality of it. I'm surprised by how much I could fit in here. And of course, it does have this long chain, but I found and I don't exactly know if you're meant to do this, but I just cross the straps inside and it becomes a lot shorter, which is nice to just put on my shoulder. Now, since I did get this one, first of all, I've gotten so much extra use out of it. I think I wear it a lot because to me, this light pink is more of a neutral and it goes with a lot of my outfits and I'm very pleased with the size, even though it's a smaller bag compared to what I use normally for my cheaper Colette bags. I think this works well to go out for lunch or dinner or just for a couple drinks or something. I can fit all of my essentials in there without overcrowding it with junk. For days I don't need my laptop, this is kind of the perfect size for me. Now comparing it to the real thing, I haven't seen the real bag but from what I've seen online I think the dimensions are a little bit different or maybe the real one is just a little bit different size wise or perhaps more compressed or flat at the bottom. This one is flat there, but it doesn't really hold that shape. So 
so it's a bit hard to compare it. For some reason I thought this was very different to something that YSL makes, but only recently when I was looking on their website again I did see the Monogram Chain Wallet and I think this is what it's meant to be. Either way, I do love it and I've gotten a lot of use out of it. So again, I've got to say that this one set the bar really high. But now I'll move on to the next bag that I got and this one was a lot less impressive. Hmm. This is kind of what I was more expecting to get from I Offer. It is a little squished at the moment, but I'm sure a lot of you out there will know what this one is. This one is based on the Gucci Soho Disco bag and that one's price is $1,465. Of course on iAlpha, this one is actually the Hot 2008 Women's Handbag and I paid $12.99 for it. And I feel like I definitely got what I paid for on this one. If anything, it's probably worth a little less. So I feel like you can just hear it, me touching it. It just doesn't feel nice. It's not thin, but it just doesn't feel nice. Now, of course, the Gucci Soho Disco Bag, it comes in a few different colors. I've seen it really only in three, and someone please correct me if I'm wrong, but I've seen it in tan, black, and red. This is none of those. I saw the seller that I purchased from had those three colors and a white, or this cream color. I did request to get the tan because I thought that would go best with most of my things, even though it's not normally what I like. I just thought it was a good neutral bag, and this is what I ended up getting. So I don't know if this is actually what they're sending everyone who requests tan handbags from them or I, I don't really know, but I got this beige. It's not actually a color that Gucci make, I'm pretty sure. Apart from that, of course, it's got this sad little tassel. I think the real one is maybe twice as thick, but again, I kind of expected this sort of thing from I offer. So I feel like the first bag that I got was a bit of a fluke. I can't say I was too surprised to get this, even though it was disappointing at the very least that I didn't get the right color. Another thing as well, and I've seen the real one too, I think that this stitching on here, while it's not messy, it just doesn't look right. I think on the real bag it looks a little bit more embedded into the bag, or the GG just looks a little bit more puffy if that makes sense. But this one doesn't. Size-wise I feel like it's probably close enough, I haven't put it side by side the real thing, nor have I really used this one. I think I might have taken it out once or twice, but I'm not going to lie, I turned it around and just use it as a plain cream bag. And I feel like on its own it's alright, maybe it looks like I got it from Kmart or something, but it's a functional bag and it hasn't fallen apart. As weird as the replica side of things are, it's not a bad handbag. It's just a bad replica. I guess to sum up on this one, as bad as the quality is, I'd probably like it a lot more if at the very least I got sent the right color, but maybe it was a simple mistake or perhaps they do this a lot. I don't know since this was the only experience of me getting sent the wrong item or wrong color. Now moving on to the third bag and I quickly will mention I didn't order all of these in one sitting. I just ordered one and then kind of waited a few weeks and ordered more as time went by. But the third one that I have here, it's pretty much the biggest bag that I got. So again, probably a very popular bag that most people will know, even if you're not that into bags. Again, I'm not into bags, and I knew what this one was called, and I feel like I see it everywhere. This one is meant to be the Louis Vuitton Neverfull Beige Damier Azure, and the price is $1,900 on that one. Now, of course, on I offer, this one is really the new handbag shoulder bag, and I paid $19.49 for it. So I feel like if I can get it all in the frame, from far away it's all right. Right? I feel like for how common these are and how often you see them, or at the very least in my opinion, I feel like every second woman on the train in the morning has one of these in varying colors. I feel like if you just saw me zipping around town, you wouldn't think twice about it, right? If I was far away. However, up close, you'll easily be able to tell that this is completely fake. It's definitely a replica for one big reason. Can you tell what I'm talking about? So of course this one has that similar print to the real Louis Vuitton, but it doesn't say Louis Vuitton anywhere on there. And I guess that could be a good thing or a bad thing depending on the person that gets this. Now, I don't know if all of the ones that the seller was sending came out like this or only a few. It's very hard to tell on that website, but mine doesn't say it anywhere on there. Although in saying that the lining does have a few LV symbols on the inside. If I can show you, I know it's a little dark. I know that's not the right lining, but it does say LV in there, but on the outside, it doesn't say anything about it, right? And I guess that could be technically a good thing or a bad thing, as I said. I think for some people, their standpoint on replicas is they kind of understand going after 
the look of a designer but not necessarily copying the name and if that's your standpoint this could be completely perfect for you because of course on the outside it's not saying it's Louis Vuitton even though it's definitely going after that never full style let's be honest it's completely ripped it off uh, but it's just not saying LV or Louis Vuitton anywhere on the bag although up close I notice now these little studs that are holding the straps do say that super tiny I know now that really strikes me as quite odd that they'd go to the detail on the studs, but I guess they've just got a lot of those for heaps of replica bags that they used on this one and just didn't have any print on the canvas. Now size wise, from what I can tell this is pretty close. I think I've seen a few people say in either comments on different reviews when I looked on the website or even YouTube reviews when people have gotten replica Neverfulls is the fact that they've gotten quite square bags and this one kind of tapers out which I think it's meant to do. Now, if we get into the nitty gritty details on this one, apart from the lacking design on the canvas, there are quite a few issues with this one. If you can see the straps are wafer thin, they're extremely thin and have no structure. And I guess all other fake leather lining on the bag is very thin as well. It just feels quite flimsy again, which is definitely what I expected. I'm not saying that it's anything I wasn't expecting because I know you do get what you pay for. I think the uh, YSL when I first got that and then had a few disappointing ones I thought okay I just got lucky once and then everything else is going to turn out quite funny but apart from that I've noticed as well this one is the only bag that has really bad stitching issues just threads coming undone kind of on every surface uh, one little thing though they did include a free little bag I don't know exactly know what this is called and I don't know if it comes with every Neverfull or if you just buy it separately but a tiny little uh, coin purse I guess or a tiny little clutch thing, very small. So again if I wanted to use this one out and about I'd have a matching little thing that I could clip inside and grab out to include little bits in. Another random positive, I believe the closure on this one is the same as the real thing, so just this little clip. So I understand what they were going for. I guess design wise it would be pretty good if it just included the LV but quality this is not great. It's quite shitty to be honest. But again for $12, kind of what I was expecting. That doesn't even, yeah that doesn't do anything. So yes, another one that I was expecting. Another cheap ASMR bag squeeze. Now, in saying all of the negatives, I think I might still use it. I did bring it out of the house once, only for a short journey, and don't get me wrong, I would never bring this to work or anything, since I know it looks very trashy and flimsy, but I don't know, I'd probably still use it, maybe for a weekend away or something, or maybe to go to a friend's house if I just need to chuck a whole bunch of stuff in one bag. This is obviously quite large, and it doesn't matter if it gets trashed, although that might happen a lot easier since it is quite paper thin and flimsy, but. I don't know, I guess, like I said, maybe some people would be happy with the fact it doesn't say LV all over it. Maybe in their minds it would make getting a replica a little bit better. But yeah, after everything I said, again, this is definitely the sort of thing I expected to receive. Now, after receiving that bag, I went back to an original seller that I purchased from, where I got the pink YSL, because I knew that I trusted them a little bit more than the previous two. One that sent me the wrong color and one that just really wasn't that good quality, but since I thought the YSL was really good, I decided to buy it in black and I did end up getting that as a gift for someone. She saw my pink one and she thought it was really cute. I did of course immediately say, hey, it's not real when she asked me and she still liked it. She thought, you know, it looked nice and I remember we came to the subject of talking about birthday presents and came to the conclusion that I was going to get her a black one for her birthday and she did receive it. I think it came pretty quickly, quicker than I expected, but I did have pretty good experiences getting things fairly quickly. Even though I know many people have said it's taken months for them to receive bags, I hadn't experienced that up until this point. But the black bag did come and it was similar to the pink one that I showed you, but I'll make sure I put the real one up on the screen since it was slightly different. The one that I ended up getting was the large envelope chain bag, so it has a bit of a different design on the front. And that one is 2590 On I offer it is the new black handbag and that one was again $32.50. So yes, unfortunately I don't have it to show. I believe that I've got a picture somewhere of it, so I'll put it up if I remember to do that, but very similar to the pink one, same quality. It just had a little bit of a black strap on the front, 
down there and I think the straps were a little bit different. So I will put in a picture of the real one and the eye offer one when I find that to show you. But of course I don't have it now since I've gifted it to someone and she loves it. She is happy with it, even though it is of course a replica and she knows this. It's a bag that she uses a lot. I think it's a pretty good black staple bag. Really quickly, since I love that pink one so much and since I know the black one turned out well and she's happy with hers, I'm very tempted to buy a second one for myself, but I won't and I'll explain why in a little bit at the end. Now moving on to another bag that I got here that I'm able to show and my faith was restored a little bit in this one. This one is a smaller Louis Vuitton bag and I believe it is based on the Louis Vuitton Speedy 30 monogram canvas. And that one is $1,460 for real. However, on iOffer, this one is really the Hot Women Type Handbag for $24.40. So, like I said, I guess I was impressed by this one. It's a lot better than the previous two, especially the Neverfull for the fact that that one was quite flimsy. This one's quality feels pretty nice. It feels like quite a thick material and the zipper is quite sturdy. I haven't had it stick. All of it just feels nice, if that makes sense. Like I said, my faith really was restored in eye offer, or at the very least the salad that I chose for this one compared to the never full Louis Vuitton that I got because of course that one, poor quality. This one doesn't feel that bad. And of course I got sent the right one compared to the little Gucci. So I finally had a little luck again. Now, apart from the feeling, I feel like looks wise, this one is pretty accurate from what I've seen. I know it's meant to wrap around the bottom and this one does that. So of course on one side, the print is upside down versus on the other side where it's right way up. On the inside, it does have that similar lining to the uh, Neverfull, which I don't exactly know if it's meant to look like this because I know there's a few different linings that they have. On the inside, there is a tiny little pouch, which I guess could be good to chuck my phone in. Now, of course, like the YSLs, I'm happy with how this one turned out. I haven't had as much wear out of this one like I have the YSL just because of the color. I guess it's not something that goes with most of my outfits, but on the rare occasion where I wear some darker colors or plainer colors, I feel like this has been nice. And just a small thing with this one, I guess because it doesn't have a long strap, it's just got these short little ones. It's not as useful for me. I don't like to just have things in the crook of my arm. So that's a small downside, but it's just how the bag is since it doesn't have that strap with it. Although I know the real thing, you can buy it with a strap. Overall, this is a pretty nice quality one. I think the one downside I noticed is the painting on the sides of the fake leather straps. Can you see it's really messy but from far away i feel like most people wouldn't notice apart from that there wasn't any stitching coming undone or any weird things that i've noticed i guess one thing and this is of course for the people that know a lot about designer items and something that i have learned recently of course the way that the print is lined up is wrong here so obviously for many people this is a dead giveaway by the fact that the lvs and any of the symbols really aren't in a prominent place and it's not all symmetrical uh, so I know a lot of people would see this and know immediately that it's fake, but for many people that don't really care so much or, you know, for people that don't know anything about designer items, which I can say as someone who really doesn't, to be perfectly honest, I feel like if I saw this six months ago, I'd easily think that this was real Louis Vuitton. Now, after the reasonable success of that last purchase, I ended up getting another replica Louis Vuitton. And this one is a little bit of a unique one in the sense it is a backpack. This one is, of course, based on the Louis Vuitton Palm Springs Backpack Mini. And that one goes for $2,650. But, of course, on iOffer, this one is the new Palm Springs Backpack Mini for only $29.90. So, this one is, of course, a little backpack. It's got some straps here. I believe on the real one, it comes with two different kinds of straps. And I believe I've seen the way the straps go together or clip together is a little bit different. I don't think it's on these slidey metal pieces, but I'm definitely gonna have to look at a photo to be sure. In any case, there's just the one kind of straps on this. And I feel like design wise, for the most part, it's all there. Uh, of course, it's got this little piece on the top, which on the real one might be a teeny bit thicker, but it's not super thin up there. It's got a front little pocket. And on the inside, there is a teeny tiny pocket in order to put things in there, like a phone, even this little tag, which I don't get why it's on the bottom. Can you see that there? It's kind of something I'd expect to see on the top of a bag, but what do I know? I'm not a bag designer. Overall, it's pretty good. And again, feels like it's a nice quality. It feels even thicker and more sturdy than the previous bag, which I feel is saying something since that one is so thick. I don't know if any of this is translating on camera, but even just to touch this one, it just feels a lot better. It's not making those gross squeaky sounds like the other two bags that I showed you, the Neverfull and also the uh, little Gucci bag. So all around, it's pretty good. 
It is quite small and quite awkward for a backpack, I guess. I think I'm probably not cool enough to wear this. I don't know how you would wear this, but I've worn it out once or twice. I think it could be nice as a bit of a novelty bag and I don't really have the money to be spending that much on a novelty backpack, if you know what I mean. But I thought it could be really good for days where I wanna take out my camera since it's the perfect size for that, but not much else. It is very, very small. Obviously, I'm comparing it to the size of my head and here we are. Now, again, kind of like the previous bag, lining up the print on the front is an issue. I believe on the real one, there should be two LVs kind of front and center there. And of course this one there isn't. So again, many people who will know things about designer bags will know this is a dead giveaway. But apart from that, I've got to say the quality seems really good. So it strikes me as quite odd as to why they would go to so much effort in putting everything together and trying to make it look nice and like the real thing and then not line it up properly. But from what I've seen to see a lot, I think that's quite a common issue with many replica bags, just things being off center. So I know that now and I've seen many bags around that look like this and not just the Louis Vuitton but other brands where I've just started to notice certain things and I've started to notice it when I've seen other people's bags like this one I've seen a few times out and about and also the Neverfulls when I've seen things off center in the past I wouldn't have thought anything of it but now I'm starting to see that person has a replica maybe they bought theirs on IR for two but I've got to say though I feel like this one is definitely a lot better than the other replicas I've seen which is a little reassuring now we're at the end of the haul since that's the last bag that I have to show you that is here with me. However, there is one last bag that I've ordered that hasn't shown up yet. I'll still talk about it since there's a bit of a story behind this one. Now I had purchased a replica of the large boy Chanel handbag and that one goes for a whopping $7,760. Now I actually know a lot of women with this handbag. I know one lady that has quite a few and it is a beautiful bag. So I was super keen to see the replica that I had purchased when it arrived and try to compare it. Now, on IAFA, I got the large boy leather bag for only $45.40. So, of course, I'm talking about it, and it's not here. It's one that I ordered in October, and it hasn't arrived. I know all the previous bags arrived in, say, a month at the most, so it's been quite a lot of time. Now, when I purchased it, and I believe with all of the bags, the seller gave me tracking details, and I've tried checking to see where it is, but the tracking details don't work. And not only that, but the seller isn't replying to my messages at all. I've given them ample time to respond, it's been a couple weeks, and they seem to have dropped off the face of the earth. And I think they have, since I've checked their seller page on the website, and what do you know, they're no longer there. So I'm not holding my breath on it arriving, I know there's still a chance it might, since I've heard some people say it can take an extended wait, but based on the fact they're not messaging back, I'm not thinking it will. Although if it does, I'll definitely update you, since I really want to see what it turns out like, if only it would arrive first so I can see. But like I said, I'm not holding my breath. However, in saying all of that, I know this was a risk when I went in buying that some of them, or at the very least one of them, like it did here, wouldn't arrive. And clearly it is something that could potentially happen if you order on the site, so that is something I wanted to mention. Again, like I said, there's a chance it might turn up, but it's just not here yet and it's looking like it won't. Of course, for myself, it was only one out of seven that didn't arrive yet. Like I said, it still might, but apart from that one, I feel like I got really lucky in the sense that all the other bags arrived super quickly. I say that for coming overseas, of course they took, you know, two or three weeks. To me, that's pretty quick. I live in Australia and anytime I order things online from other countries, I just know it's going to take a lot of time. So since I was expecting quite a long wait for most of them, I was pleasantly surprised and I found all of the sellers barring this recent experience were quite good at their communication, they would message back very quickly and answer any questions I had. So I can't fault the site or majority of the sellers that I've dealt with just because I've had one bad experience here. There is always just that inherent risk ordering things online, especially on weird websites that things like this can happen and I knew that going in. Now I guess on the payment side of things, of course, the safest way to pay a lot of the times is through PayPal and a lot of the sellers do say that they accept PayPal. But you can't always believe that since in my experience, I don't think I paid through PayPal once and most of the ones that I chose said that they accept PayPal. Only half the time when I tried to put a payment through, through PayPal, it wouldn't work and it never did work so I had to use a card. And then the rest of the time when the seller's pages said that they accept PayPal, it said it right there, but immediately when you try and order, they'd send you a message saying that they don't accept PayPal. So it's just something I've noticed. Maybe there are some sellers that do, but in my experience, not something I was able to do at all. So I know that will be a concern for some out there. And that's the reason why I wanted to warn you about that. 
However, I have come up with a little bit of a workaround solution. This is where that I made my payments on the website and a majority of websites that I use and don't necessarily trust. So I thought I'd share this tip here in case you want to do it as well. What I did was set up a separate bank account with my bank and I had a separate card just for that account and anytime I'd make purchases, let's say the bag was $30, I'd only put $30 in that account, use the card and then wait until it was empty. That way there's no risk of them, you know, overcharging or double dipping. And I did that anytime I made a purchase. I do that quite a bit actually with online shopping. Of course, when you shop online a lot, there are always risks of your card having fraudulent transactions pop up if your details are taken, even if you only use safe sites like I have in the past. I've still had that issue and yes, your bank covers you for that, they'll pay you the money back, but still, if you don't want to risk it, that's just one thing you can do to prevent the risk. Now I wanted to say as well, on IAFA you can see how many times people before you have bought the same thing and it will tell you how many hundreds or dozens of items have been sold and I feel like that's a good indication to go off. There is also a rating system for the sellers out of five, five stars and what I always tried to do was buy from people only with five stars or sometimes four stars if I couldn't find what I wanted. So that's another thing to keep in mind when you're buying from these people. And third of all, there is also feedback section on all of the sellers or sellers that have been established for quite some time and people just leave comments saying what their experience was. There are definitely some comments and feedback that seems like it was written by bots by the language that they've used and the way their words are put together but maybe they just have English as a second language, I don't know. Apart from the absolute glowing reviews, there are also some critical ones in the mix which I always really like to see. I think it's good to see the good and bad. Just as I've shared here today, you want to know what you're getting yourself into when you make one of those purchases online. I guess to sum up my experience, some bags were clearly better than others and I've liked more than others. Quality wise it's all over the place and just the experience dealing with different sellers has been a little bit good and bad depending on the person. Of course I really like the bags that I've gotten from that one YSL seller. Majority of the rest of them were okay even if the quality of the bags weren't. And then of course there's just been this bad experience with the Chanel replica. Again I'll make sure I do update if anything changes on the matter, if by chance it still turns up. But I think best of all in my experience this website and getting these bags was just a good experience for me to try out certain bags and see if I like them before committing to buying the real one. Or of course maybe you want to buy these and just use them as is, not buying a real one. If that's all you want to buy that's totally your choice with your own money, that's definitely my opinion on the subject. And if that's what you're aiming for, if you do your research, hopefully you'll get lucky and get a good one like I've gotten a few in the mix here. Just definitely do your research first and understand it is a bit of a gamble even if you see a really good review, even if you see good pictures, you never know how it's going to go. But if you want to take that risk, sometimes it can pay off here. I feel like for the most part it's pretty good if you're sensible with the way you purchase on there and yes I have not received one bag but apart from that for the amount of bags I've purchased I feel like it's definitely been a better experience than not. And now before I go as well I just wanted to say of course that my favorite one out of the bunch was definitely this pink YSL replica so I think what I need to do is start putting my money aside and save up for the real thing since I really love this one and I know I love the real one too. I've got to say just because I have purchased you know real Louboutins before I know that there is a special experience in buying real designer goods and I'm not just saying only buy replicas, I'm not pushing that point on anyone. This is more just informative and of course it's paid off for me because yes, I've tried out this one. So I guess what I'll do is keep using this one in the meantime as motivation to save up for the real thing. I'm just glad that this worked out and I think that this will be a smart choice. I won't be wasting my money since I know I love this one so much. Alright, now I think that's all I have to share here today. I wanted to thank you so much for watching this one. I really hope you enjoyed it or found it helpful in case you're looking at doing the same thing as myself, getting a replica before you get a real one, or maybe you just wanted to see what I offer is like. Hopefully the information I shared helped you out. Also, let me know in a comment down below what is your dream designer bag. I'd love to know which ones you're coveting because I'd like to expand my knowledge on these bags, try and see more photos of them, so if you're popping names down below, I'll definitely look them up. For now, we'll be leaving this one here today. So I wanted to thank you again for watching, subscribe if you haven't already, and hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye!